Imagine it is Christmas. You are at your grandmother's house, just enjoyed a wonderful dinner, and you ask grandmother, do we have gingerbread cookies? She said, no, but I can whip some up for you. All I need is my recipe. Can you please just quickly run down to the basement and fetch my little red cookbook? Now she swears it's somewhere close by to the window and you go down to go find it and an hour later you emerge victorious. A little bit more difficult than what you initially thought this expedition would be. This was a small victory, but it made me think. There has to be better ways to organize a basement. This is exactly what many of us experience in our digital lives. We collect notes, tasks, ideas, and suddenly finding that one note is like searching for a needle in a haystack. It's not just about organization. It's about finding what you need when you need it without the attic or basement expedition. We want our digital lives to be more organized so we can easily retrieve information when the need arises. And luckily, we have rules to live by. This is rules or ideals that we strive for when we work on our personal knowledge management. It's capture, re-emergence, and retrieval. Capture, we want capturing of ideas and thoughts and notes to be as easy and seamless as possible. Second point, we want re-emergence. We want serendipity to be built into our system. We want related notes or related ideas to pop up when we are looking for something. We want it to act as our brains act. When you look at a flower, it makes you think of other memories about that specific flower. It makes you think of other people. It makes you think of memories that you had in the past. We want something similar in our personal knowledge management system. And lastly, and most importantly, is retrieval. Retrieval should be easy. If you want to retrieve something, you should be able to do it in a matter of seconds. Now, to get to these three rules and to adhere to them, it takes a little bit of practice, but we have tools available to us. In Obsidian, we have linked notes, which creates that network of a mind, but we also have tags. Now, tags can get overwhelming very quickly. Therefore, I want to stick to the principle called KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Let's just use three tags and no more. Obviously, later you can adapt your system, but when you're just starting out, just stick to these three. Type, on, and log. The type tag, the type specifies what type of note, what type of idea this is. This note is a project. This note is a meeting. This note is a recipe. And within the project notes, you can obviously have more information about what is actually on it. That's when we get to the on tag. But here you can see, you can walk to your shelf. And if you're looking for a specific meeting that you had in the past, you would immediately go to the middle shelf. That's where all your meeting notes are stored. This is what a hashtag does in your system. If you're looking for recipes, you can disregard the first and second shelves. You can just go to the last one because that's where all your recipes are stored. The tag type helps you organize information a little bit better. So once we have a structure of our note, and most of my notes would just be type note because it doesn't specifically relate to something, but if it's a project, it's tagged project. If it's a meeting, it's tagged as a meeting. If it's a workshop or a classroom session that I have at university, I tag it appropriately. To the top tag, it indicates the properties of the notes itself. For meetings, you have top meeting. For recipe, you have top recipe. For journal entries, you have top daily notes, weekly notes, monthly notes, and so on. You can see that this property is used to identify the skeleton of the page you're working on, not the actual substance. Then we carry on to the on tag. So if we take our type examples from the previous page, 
you can see we have a top project and you can imagine that this is a bakery project within the type project we would obviously have some meetings because we're running a business so we need to get people together in order to make traction with our goals and our ambitions of our bakery and lastly we have our recipes that we use in the bakery so for the first one we have type project and here you can have the on tags just to specify a little bit more what the substance of this page is well we know that this is a project we can see that it's on business it's on bread baking it's on company management you choose what on tags you want to use. And the on tag just specifies or gives you a little bit more color as to what this note is about. For the top meeting, the middle picture, you can see that this meeting was on performance review. So if you have employees and you have meetings with them, then this meeting will be a performance review meeting. And later on, you can filter on top meeting and on performance review, and you significantly reduce the number of notes that would be returned with your data view. Or it could be the company anniversary, or it could be on a party that you're organizing, or it could just be about perfecting that sourdough recipe. And lastly, we have our top recipe. We know that it's a recipe, so we can already filter to that part of the shelf. And now we want to specify or color in what this type recipe is all about. Well, it's on sourdough, it's on cuisine bread, it's on baking. And with these type of tags, you can see how easy it would be to narrow it down to what you're looking for in the future. So again, the on recipe example, on cuisine French, we can add additional on tags, on desserts, on creme brulee. Or if you find a cool website, you can say it's on a website or on a cool website. If the website is about sport cars, you'll say on sports cars, on Ferrari. Now this structure that I'm highlighting here is from my log release system, log relate discover. And this is where you can pull individual lines through to data view queries. If you haven't heard of the log release system, go watch my video on log release. Lastly, we have log. And a log is used to keep chronological track of things that you do. If you bake a recipe, you want to log that you've baked a recipe. If you made a meal, you want to log that. If you went to the gym, you want to log that. So this is for anything that is an action that you have done, that you want to log, that you want to pull into a specific note somewhere in your vault. And I've made a couple of walkthrough examples of how this would work. So I'll also put the link to those videos. But you can imagine that this is for when you're cooking recipes, when you go into the gym, when you take your vitamins. Now again, the three rules, capture, re-emergence, retrieval. Whenever you capture something, ask yourself, how will I find this in the future when I need it? For the re-emergence, you want things to bubble up to the surface. You want your obsidian to be a treasure trove of information. You don't want it to be something that you capture and then never look at again. You want interesting ideas to pop up and re-emerge even when you're not specifically looking for them. And lastly, retrieval is the most time-sensitive one. If I'm looking for a note, I know I've put it somewhere in my system and I want it now. I should be able to get it within seconds. So I hope this gives you a little bit more of an idea on how to think about the tag structure in Obsidian. We have the type, which specifies the skeleton. We have the on, which just gives more color. And then we have the log tag, which we mainly use for log readies, individual logs on things that you do. Now, these are three of my most used tags. And obviously you can get a little bit more granular with these hashtags. If you're doing task management in Obsidian, you would have additional tags like time required, effort required, priority. But I would say all of those need to be developed by yourself. For everything else, for things that you want to resurface or get to in the future, type on and log should be enough. You can think for the recipes as well. You'll have the time required or the ingredients that you need. Those could all be hashtags as well, but it gets confusing quite quickly. So I would say start simple and then expand it through trial and error.
Now, if you feel that your personal knowledge management system looks like this, and you want to get ahead quicker to make it just a little bit more organized and provide some mental clarity for yourself, I have consulting services, which I can help you get up and running with all the principles that I teach throughout my YouTube realm. And there's also a evergreen demo vault available where all the plugins that you need, all the community plugins that you need is ready installed. All these principles that I'm teaching is ready there with walkthroughs that would get you up and running very quickly. So you can buy that demo vault if you don't want to go through my previous videos. Otherwise, if you are a person that has more time than money, everything that I've built, I have built on YouTube. So you can build my entire evergreen demo vault by just watching my previous videos. I want to say thank you for your support. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It helps a lot. And till next time, strength and honor. May the lights illuminate you.